talking about the cutting tools which are used in a sewing machine. The first cutting tool is a fabric shear or a scissor. We all have seen a scissor, right? These scissors are usually 10 to 12 inches long and are usually made out of stainless steel. The next cutting tool that we have is called a seam ripper. Now if you see the picture, you will see that you might have seen this in your mother's stitching box as well. This is used for cutting the already made stitches without damaging the fabric. It has a half U on top. The longer side of the U has a blade attached to it which helps us cut the stitches. The next equipment that we talk about is called a pinking shear. A pinking shear is a scissor which has got serrated edges and it helps give a zigzag fray resistant edge to the fabric, also a zigzag pattern to the fabric edges. Next we have the measuring tools. In the measuring tool, the first one is the meter ruler. We all have seen a meter ruler, right? This is the same ruler that we use for our classroom purpose. The only difference is this is much longer in length than the ones that you use for your daily classroom purpose. The next measuring tool is a set square and perspex ruler. The set square and perspex ruler, you can call it to be a protractor of the fabric. This is used for upholsteries when you want to get a sharp right angle. A perspex ruler will help you get a sharp right angle in your upholsteries. This also has a magnifying effect which helps you show the grain of the fabric clearly. But the third measuring tool that we talk about is the measuring tape which is made out of fiberglass. It is not stretchable at all and it has the metric as well as the imperial measurements printed on it. Next we move on to a few other tools that are used in the swing room. First one is of course the needles. The needles are graded from number 1 to number 24. Now our thought process could go that number 1 is the tiniest of the needle. But I'm sorry you are wrong, it is just the opposite. Out. Needle number 1 is the longest and the thickest of the needles and needle number 24 is the smallest and the tiniest of the needles. They, these different uh, cut point, these different sizes of needles are used for various fabrics. Next we have all the threads, the buttons, the zippers and the different fabric trims which need to be stored in a large basket and in a drawer separately in the sewing room. Then we have the thimbles. Any guitar player would definitely know about a thimble. A thimble is basically a steel covering which is worn on the thumb and the second finger while sewing. This is made out of stainless steel and it prevents your finger from getting poked by the needle while sewing. Next we have the pattern paper. These are basically the specially marked paper cutouts which are usually used for getting even and equal, equal sized patterned fabric for different upholsteries. Next we have the pins. The pins are usually of 18 mm in length. Smaller pins are used for lightweight fabric. Glass pointed pins or glass headed pins are used for fabrics like shears and lacy fabrics and 30 mm pins are used for cutting out loose covers from large pieces of fabric. Along with pin comes a pin cushion which is like a small sponge cushion in which you poke the pins so that you don't lose it and it comes handy while you are working. Then we have the marking equipments for a tailor also known as a tailor's chalk which actually looks like a used bar of soap. Also apart from that we can use a colored carbon paper or a pencil for marking lines and drawing patterns on the fabric for cutting it out. Next we have the clips and blades. While you are sewing a fabric, you have to place it evenly and stretch it out and ensure that it doesn't move otherwise your stitches are going to be uneven. For that, we usually clip the fabric to the work table. If the fabric is small, we usually use fabric weights and place it on the fabric so that it doesn't move around while we are sewing one side. Lastly, we have work tables which we have already discussed and we definitely need an iron and ironing board in this room too. Now let's talk about the different activities that we undergo in this room too. The first activity being alteration of uniforms whenever a new joining joins in. 
they have to be issued a new uniform and it has to be altered according to their size which is done by the school board. Next we have preparing or mending of items such as guest garments, we have uniforms, we have room linen like bed sheets, bed covers, pillow covers, duvet covers etc. We have table linen like table cloth, linen napkin etc. Next we have the stitching of draperies and soft furnishings for guest rooms and public areas as well. We have converting the con condemned or the discarded linen into makeovers which we have already discussed before. Next is stitching bed sheets, pillowcases for baby pots and cribs which are usually custom made for the hotels. Next is machine marking or monogramming of hotel linen usually on the right or the front part of the hotel which is visible to the guests. Next, a sewing room also suggests different fabrics for uniforms, for making upholstery, trees, draperies, etc. So these are the few activities that we undergo in the sewing room among many other. A lot more details have been given out in the handout. Next, we'll be talking about a few basic hand stitches that are done in the sewing room. When we talk about hand stitches, they are usually divided into two broad categories. First one is the temporary stitch, the second one is the permanent stitch. First let us talk about the temporary stitches. The temporary stitch is basically used for sewing two or more layers of fabric uh, with a different colored thread that can be removed later on. These stitches are also known as tacking or basting. Have a look at the picture and you will be able to see that there are no knots on either side. So you can just pull the thread from one side and remove the thread all at once. Next, there are three different types of temporary stitches. The first one is an even basting. An even basting is a stitch which has equal spacing in between them which is of 0.5 cm. The second stitch is known as an uneven basting. An uneven basting is a stitch which is of 1 point centimeter on the right side of the fabric and just half of it on the back side or the wrong side of the fabric. So if the front part is 1.5 centimeter, the wrong side of the fabric will have a stitch of 0.75 centimeters. The third stitch or the third temporary stitch is known as the extra firm basting. Extra firm basting is a long stitch of 1.5 centimeter with two or three small stitches and then again another long stitch of 1.5 cm and this is repeated till the end of the fabric. This is given for extra firm grip or hold on the fabric. Next we talk about the permanent stitches which are applied. There are three categories of permanent stitches which are applied to a fabric. The first one being the joining stitches, the second one being the edge finishing stitches and the third one being fancy stitches. We first talk about the different joining stitches. The first stitch that we talk about is the round stitch which is the most common form of stitch. It is the simplest form of stitch which is meant for sealing the edges of the fabric and also for mending. The stitches are very small in size and about 0.1 to 0.3 centimeters in length. Next stitch that we talk about is the back stitch. Backstitch is one of the strongest forms of stitches and can replace machine stitching as well. These are very small stitches without any space in between. Next we move on to the edge finishing stitches. The edge finishing stitches, most common one out of it is the hemming method. The hemming method is used for stitching the folded edges of the fabric. The next stitch is called a buttonhole stitch, also known as a blanket stitch and as the name says, it is used for finishing the edges of the blanket. Next we have darning, in Hindi we call it the rafu. Darning is a sewing technique which is used for repairing holes or worn out areas and we use a needle and thread to knit the holes in that fabric. Next stitch is the overcasting or overlocking stitch. We have already discussed about it. It is used for finishing the raw edges of the fabric. Next we have the whipping stitch. The whipping stitch is used for joining two edges of fabrics together and giving them a smooth finish. Next we talk about the fancy stitches. There are plenty of fancy stitches which exist. We are going to talk about few of the most basic fancy stitches. First among them is the satin stitch. Here's a picture of the satin stitch which shows you that it is usually used for filling up patterns in the fabric. Next is the cross stitch which is used for 
are multiple equipments which are used in the sewing room, namely the sewing machines, the measuring tools, the cutting tools and all the other tools which are used for stitching. Multiple activities are carried out in the sewing room, namely mending, darning, stitching, etc. And lastly, a number of hand stitches are used in the sewing room, namely the temporary stitches which is also known as the tacking or the basting and permanent stitches which are the joining stitches, the edge finishing stitches and the fancy stitches. So before we end this session, always remember you cannot tailor make a situation in life, but you can tailor make an attitude to fit into that situation. On this note, stay safe, stay healthy and we will see you again soon. Thank you so much for attending.